Hey, I wanted to make a video just to show kind of what I do whenever I get a new drum or new to me, but I get a used drum. Uh, I always want to go through and take the thing apart and really just kind of inventory the parts, make sure everything's in good working order, see what, if anything, needs to be replaced, usually heads, um, hoops, snare wires, things like that. It's pretty common. Uh, what I have here is a Ludwig Acrylite snare drum from 1967. But interestingly enough, it has a round knob muffler. They had gone from the baseball bat to the round knob, I guess, by April 8th. April 8th of 1967. Um, I thought this this happened in 68, so that's a little bit of an education for me. Kind of cool. Um, it has the P32 butt with the Ludwig script logo. It has a P85, and not only is it a P85, which I think it should have been a P83 still in 1967. I don't know exactly what year they came out with the P85, but I thought it was more like 69 or so. Um, unsure about that, but if it were originally, if, if this were the original equipment on this drum, it almost certainly would have had the carriage portion of it with multiple holes at the bottom instead of two holes. This two hole design came along later, like in the late 70s and early 80s, P85s were, were so equipped. Still for use with cord, not for use with straps. Um, so this is almost certainly not the original strainer, but um, no holes have been added. Um, there is a slight dent where the bottom of this strainer, it's been pushed in just a little bit, and an even more minor one on one of the lugs, the bottom of one of the lugs. So I'm gonna have to deal with that. This is the way the drum came to me. Um, Pinstruck coated on top, it's complete with the muffler. Um, and the bottom head is a seven mil head. It's an Evans resonant head, which is meant to be a resonant head on toms. It's a seven mil head, I believe. It's definitely not a three mil snare side head. So it sounds really weird and I don't know, but maybe whoever had it before thought it was a true snare side and maybe thought the drum just sounded weird. I don't know. The 60s Acrolytes are really my favorite just because of the finish. I love the finish. Um, I used to have a 1970 actually that still had this finish with a P85 and the round knob muffler. Um, and uh, I always regretted getting rid of it. It's just my favorite Acrolyte. So I'm gonna take this thing apart, clean it all up, put it back together, see how it sounds. So typical stuff, there's dust down in the bottom of the thing and the drum itself is dusty everywhere that dust was able to gather. <clears throat> Slight denting there on the lug. Slight also there on the left side with the butt. Very minimal stuff for a 50 year old drum, 50 plus year old drum is not bad at all. The real dent concern is just that right there at the bottom of the strainer, not hard to take out. Uh, some sticker and tape on the shell, typical kind of stuff. This lug's pretty pitted, all the lugs look like this, but they'll clean up and be shiny. They'll still be pitted, but I think they'll look good. And this is the older style lug that has the springs on the inside you can see the foam is kind of worn away this is the muffler and interestingly enough there was no crimp at the end of this usually certainly later in production of the round knob muffler they would crimp the end of the thread see those threads are clean they would they would like um you know kind of wreck them with some device so that you couldn't accidentally thread that thing off and get it lost inside the drum use a bowl so stuff doesn't go down the disposal Taking the springs out of the lugs and the threaded bushings, taking them apart, cleaning everything real good. I clean the threads of anything that has threads. I'm using a plastic bristle brush to clean the lugs, the chrome. Once all the big stuff's done, I take all the fastening hardware and throw in there and just kind of move them around. Here are the key rods going in as well. Clean the uh, hoops while I'm at it. This is the snare side, rinsing that off. The batter side as well. And then here I'm actually threading the bushings on the key rods and working off anything that's kind of stiff because I want those to thread well. And then here's all the, the small bits that are left over. Rinsing those off. And once I get them all off into my hand, I'll put the 
them over on a towel on the side of the sink there so they can dry and here are the big pieces to be rinsed and I do several rinses and when I'm done with that then take them out shake them off put them on a towel now they put a label with some tape over it and then another label over that here so I'm peeling off what I can and use isopropyl to get the sticky off and this is the stuffing from little molded cases when you buy a case that you can peel the internal foam off for like a camera case or a gun case or something that foam is perfect for packing lugs as you can see just cutting off pieces the length that you need stick the threaded bushings in and once those are in place use the spring to secure those bushings and that's about it for stuffing the lugs now when I put the lug on the drum I'm going to take another piece of foam and put in there now that's overkill they didn't do that back in the day but um, it'll keep the spring from any chance of it rubbing or vibrating against the shell too the hoops were not flat so I used my kitchen counter, which is granite, and not entirely flat, but pretty good, um, to kind of check and find the low spots. And once I find the low spots on the hoops, then I can go off camera here, just the skosh. Sorry about that. But a little bit of pressure, just boom. A little bit, not much. These are thin hoops, particularly. The you know, thicker hoops, you use more pressure. But get them flat. Thank you.